Hello, everybody. We're pleased to be here again. Hello. We're going to look at... We're going to look at some great things from the Word of God. And we're starting with the Book of Acts. The book of Acts, right? Yes, Acts. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I was very young, I when I left school, I became a reporter for a newspaper, a journalist. Ah, no, no, no. Uh, the the uh, reporter, journalist, uh, and I used to go to um, boxing matches and football matches and swimming competitions. boxing. Uh, and I used to ask a lot of questions. And I would write down the answers in my little notebook. And that's how to study the Bible. To ask, ask a lot of questions. I want to show you some things on my screen. Limit <laughs> more. <laughs> We've got to be like a journalist or a detective. So talk. Drama my journalist. No? So talk look for it, no? This is this is Sherlock Holmes. He was a Supposed to be a detective. <laughs> I'm sorry if my translation isn't very good. I don't know if it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah, it means it, it has the right meaning. Okay. So here are some questions we can ask. We can we can observe. That means we're going to. Look at all the details. Then we have to interpret what we see. That's what a, a detective does. But then, when we read the Bible, we have to see how it applies to my life. And when you work for a newspaper, you ask, you ask these questions. You say, what is happening? What is this all about? So when we read 
a passage in the Bible, we'll say, what does this story mean? Why was it written? When was it written? Where was it written? <laughs> How does the person write it? What kind of, is it history or poetry or, or something else? <laughs> And then, and then who is writing and who is he writing to? Now if you if you learn this lesson, you will be able to study the whole Bible. It will it will open up to you. <laughs> <laughs> now this this teaching is worth a million dollars, but I'm letting you have it for free. <laughs> <laughs> so let me move on now to the next one. <laughs> We're talking about the book of Acts. <laughs> and I'll read it. And uh, the first verse When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And that answers the question. That, that answers the question, when did it happen? It was on this special day of Pentecost. Hey, 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 it was a great celebration of the Jewish people, a great feast of the Jewish people. They were giving thanks for the harvest. Then in verse 2, it says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And that answers the question, what, what happened? <laughs> God poured out his Holy Spirit. And how, how did they know something was happening? They heard a mighty wind blowing. Then in verse 3, there appeared to them tongues like fire sitting upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues 
as the spirit gave them utterance. And this was the birthday of the church. The church was born. Now, the, the book of Acts is really like a bridge between the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the rest of the New Testament. You see behind me, there is a bridge. This is a bridge in San Francisco, America. San Francisco, and it joins two pieces of land. And you know, the, by, the New Testament is really in two parts. You've got the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you've got all the, the letters of people like Peter and Paul and John. And the, the two parts are fairly equal. And the book of Acts is the bridge between the two parts. And then I'll tell you a bit more about it now. So I've said it there, it, it links the second part of the New Testament to the four Gospels. The second part begins with the book of Romans and ends with the book of Revelation. It's an amazing story. And then in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, as we've said, believers gather in one place. There's a mighty wind from heaven, flames of fire. They speak in tongues. <laughs> mm. Uh, then in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, The Lord Jesus said, When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will have power. You will tell people about me. You will be my witness everywhere. Jerusalem, throughout all Judea, to the ends of the earth. Jerusalem, Judah, Samaria, and that that is an outline of the book of Acts, beginning in Jerusalem, then Judea. Then the ends of the air. So that is three parts of the book of Acts. 
And what Jesus promised was exactly fulfilled. They got a new life for the old life, new strength for the weak, power to preach for Jesus. But most important, they had a new life which was like Jesus. Uh, go, you should do. ကတဲ့ပေးတဲ့တိုင်းတကယ့်ကိုပေးဆုံလာတယ်တို့အတိတော့အတိတာရတယ်ဟောင်းတော့ဟောင်းတော့အရာကိုအာဟောင်းတ
In Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people turned to Jesus. Amen. Hey, Pentecost, then he might be the you. Platform for my day, the step you know, you and get the hour to come, my loo. Don't tongue, guy, you should be dolly can, eh? That was a real first fruits of all those who were going to believe. <laughs> Many Jewish teachers believe that at the time of Pentecost, they were remembering the birth of the Jewish religion. But Christians also remember Pentecost as when the church was born. You see, in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel chapter 36 and Jeremiah chapter 31, God promised to send the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel he said he would give us new hearts and new spirits. <laughs> he, would, he would write his law upon our hearts. It says in Hebrews, Chapter 10, verse 16. This is a covenant I will make with them. I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write it in their minds. You see, in the Old Testament, they had the outward law of Moses on big tablets of stone. And the Jews would read them and try to keep them. But in the new covenant, God takes the law and puts it inside of us. He gives us the power to love God with all our hearts. It gives us the power to love everybody else. And Jesus died and rose again to bring this into reality, into truth, into our lives. <laughs> This is so exciting. Thank God for the new covenant. <laughs> Many people try to live in the old covenant. Eddie, the Mahon, 
bring in Tema. I think Shimbo is too sad, eh? They try to live by keeping a lot of rules. Ah, the dog, Simeon, Sikan, the Amyai, Chatabido, my area, I think Shinabu, Ninabu, too sad, eh? But no, no, no. God wants to put his spirit into us. Hello, Mahoyabu, hello, Mapiabu, Piatta can go. Do ye, I shin on wing and do ye, Chimmy dog with no tema, touching up it. He gives us a new power to live the Christian life. Piatti and the Genoro, Adeptama, Cree, Adeptana, Adeptina, Boya, Adept. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> Here's a great example of one man who really met the Lord Jesus in the book of Acts. There was a man called Saul of Tarsus. And he, he was a very devout Jew. And he was persecuting the Christians. When Stephen was stoned to death, Paul, Saul was standing there looking after the clothes of the people who killed him. And he was agreeing to his death. But then he got letters to go travel up to Damascus to persecute the Christians up in Damascus. <laughs> And on his way, this happened. He was going along, and suddenly a light came from heaven. And he was... He was thrown to the ground and he couldn't see. He was blind. And Jesus spoke to him. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he meant, why are you persecuting my fellow believers, the Christians? Uh, Why? Sorry? Why are you persecuting my brothers, the believers? And as a result of this meeting with Jesus, he became a preacher of the gospel. This is the verse in Acts chapter 9. As he traveled and was nearing Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. So, and he was he was thrown to the ground. <laughs> And he became a believer. And, and he began to preach the gospel and he traveled around starting churches. Yeah, <laughs> 
He he traveled from round the Holy Land and he traveled what today is called Turkey and Greece. And then the last journey, the fourth journey, he went to Rome where he was eventually killed for his faith. And he was helping to spread the gospel. This is in red is the Roman Empire, very big empire. He helped to spread the good news all over the Roman Empire. Much, most, very much of the New Testament is written by Paul. He encouraged new churches everywhere. This is the Mediterranean Sea and there's Spain and Africa, the Holy Land. And when he couldn't visit churches, he would write letters to them. He wrote a very important letter to the Christians in Rome. And he wanted to share his gospel with the people in Rome. <coughs> now, the man who wrote Luke's gospel, Luke, he was a, a Christian and he was a doctor. But Luke also wrote the book of Acts. And Luke traveled with Paul some of the time. And I just want to show you seven steps in Paul's gospel. I was I was telling the people in India about these seven steps. And they said, we want to make this into a little tract, a little gospel leaflet to give to people. <laughs> so I'll show you these seven steps to heaven. You'll be able to share it with other people. <laughs> the first step to heaven that Paul shows us in his letter to the Romans is Romans 3, verse 23. All have sinned 
and come short of the glory of God. So we've all come short of God's standard. It's like if you if you fired an arrow and you missed the target, we've missed the target. And that means that means everybody, everybody in the world has come short of God's standard, his glory. And then Paul writes in number two, the second step, Romans 6, verse 23. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. The wages sin pays is death. The gift God gives is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. We've all sinned and we'll all die. But death is not the end. Because number, number three, number three says this. Romans 14, verse 12, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Because God knows what we've thought, what we've said, what we've done. So that's bad news because we've all sinned. We all will face judgment. But now for the good news. What is the good news? Well, in number four, we find the good news. Uh, Romans 5 verse 8. Christ died for us. This shows how much God loves us. Christ took the punishment for my sin and your sin. I should have been separated from God forever, but Jesus 
was separated from his father on the cross. So what must I do? Number five. Romans 10 verse 9. If you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe what he has done for you on the cross and by his resurrection with all your heart and confess it, you'll be saved. <laughs> If we believe this in Romans 10, 13, it says, He who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And if we if we come to him sincerely and leave our sin and ask him to save us, he will save us. <laughs> But there is one more step which is very important. Number seven. Number seven. Romans 5 verse 5. God has poured out his love into our hearts. This was done by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, how much more shall your heavenly give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So you've got a good simple sermon now you can preach. I've preached this many times and, and I think every time I've preached it, people have come to Jesus. <laughs> so you can you can share it with people that Jesus can save you completely. <laughs> Just a few more verses. These are some important verses. 
Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And then Romans 5, verse 1. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to show you very quickly now where we'll be have to move on to the next things another time. But in Romans, I want you to see how Jesus is spoken of. In Romans, Jesus is the one who sets us free. Uh, he's, like, he's like a rock which people trip over. <laughs> the Jews tripped over him. They, the Jews stumbled at him. <laughs> but those who believe find him the cornerstone of the building, the main part of the building. In Romans 9, he is the one who's, who delivers, who sets people free. In Romans 11, he is the Lord of the dead and the living. In Romans 14, he's from the family of King David. He's called the Root of Jesse. It means he's going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The message of Romans and of all Paul's letters is like this picture I'll show you. It's like, it's like birds which have been in a cage and then they are set free. And Jesus calls us to be free. <laughs> I, love, I love these books because they tell me I can live a free full life in Jesus. <laughs> God has got so many good things for you if you will study his word and be filled with his spirit. And next time you'll be looking at the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, which is very exciting.
Let me just pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for these precious truths in your word. We pray for everyone who hears this message that you'll set them completely free in Jesus. We praise you and bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope you're all going to be blessed now. <laughs> yeah, we be blessed. We are blessed. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. God, bless. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your good interpretation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are very good at teaching. Thank you to heaven send this uh, this uh, uh, PowerPoint present to my email, please. I'll yeah, I'll send them to Pastor Shaheen. I'll send I'll send it all to Dr. Okay. Shaheen. God Thank bless you. you. It's a great joy to teach you. Thank you so much. We enjoy your teaching. Oh, thank you. I enjoy your interpreting. <laughs> I'm sometimes I, I, I used to interrupt. <laughs> I have to interpret, but I I used to interrupt. Uh, interrupt. <laughs> I'll just stop the recording. Thank you. <laughs>